Welcome to Campus Connection, a podcast dedicated to connecting with our with one another. We will highlight MCC staff, students, alumni, and other guests, and talk about our professional and life experiences. You can find us on Spotify and YouTube, and you may contact us by writing in the comment section or writing to us at podcast at mccollege.edu. We would love to hear your positive feedback and your thoughts on any future topics you would like to hear. I am your host, Giovanni Mayorga, and we are recording from the beautiful 203 North LaSalle campus in downtown Chicago on the 14th floor with a great view of the east side skyline. Our podcast will focus on Midwestern Career College and who comprises this academic institution as individuals and professionals. Our guests will be MCC staff, faculty, and we will also invite people who help MCC function on a daily basis. One of the focuses of this podcast is to get to know each other and to acknowledge our individual achievements. And in doing that, I'd like to acknowledge all the hard work and dedication of my friends and colleagues here at MCC, those that are here and those that have moved on to pursue other opportunities. I am fortunate to be in my fifth academic institution and have the experience to know that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes on a daily basis that goes unnoticed as we provide a service to you. I'd like to recognize the hard work that each and every one of the staff and administrators do on a daily basis to provide a service to our students and alumni. Likewise, our education in general wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the dedicated work of our educators. Please take time to thank not only our wonderful educators, but all educators, as being an educator is a calling and the reason why we say we have an academic education. As a former certified teacher, I know firsthand how difficult of a job it is. I have a couple of family members in the elementary school systems and can say with confidence that educators are dedicated, passionate, and great people. With that, let me bring in my first guest for today, Jessica Kareem. So, Jessica, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Wonderful. It's been a long day, but happy that we can actually sit down and have a conversation about who you are and what you do and what you've done. So, welcome. Looking forward to, to speaking with you today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So, tell me a little bit about what you do currently because you're in MCC staff, a staff member, and a student. So, tell me about what you do here at MCC. So um, right now I'm working in the uh, social uh, in the international department as a social media creator, and I um, creating videos with my coworkers, and uh, we always try to get the students everything to know about Chicago, and of course about MCC, and also for students who still living abroad and thinking about studying in the United States learning English, get some next career steps and goals, and we creating content for it to see how it is as a student, as an international student, to living in Chicago. Nice. Sounds wonderful. Now you're studying, what is it that you're studying here? I'm right now in the business program. I made all of the ESL programs when I came here to learn the language. And now I'm in the association program to start working um, when I finished. So you made the decision to come not only to Midwestern Career College, but to Chicago. Yes. Now, where is it that you're from? I'm from Germany. And where exactly in Germany are you from? Um, I'm from a little town, uh, but before I moved to the United States, I lived in Berlin for a couple of years in Frankfurt. And yeah, before I came, I lived um, in Berlin, my definitely favorite city in Germany. So you grew up in, in Germany? Yes, I did. How, how was that? How do you remember that as, as a memory? Oh, it's, it's, um, it's totally different than here, I would say. But um, I think for me, it was, it's, it's great. I mean, when you're a child, you not recognize for this is your world. Um, and I like to live in Germany. Um, and when you grow up there, you learn a lot about discipline, 
a lot about um, um, really good. We, we have a great ed education system in Germany, and uh, when you're a good student, you um, can have a good education in the university. So it was really good. And also, I have to mention, because I'm from Germany and I studied there before, um, it's a nice, if you have a diploma from there, it's, you can work all over the world. So this is, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I was born here in Chicago, but I, but I was actually raised uh, outside of the U.S. I was raised in Guatemala City in Central America. And seeing how, because I have two kids, seeing how my kids or the youth here in the U.S. are growing up today and how I grew up, is completely different, right? I used to play in the streets. Um, if you see some of those documentaries of kids playing, you know, soccer, or we call it football, mm. um, in our countries, that's how I grew up. I grew up playing in the streets, playing soccer. It was a completely different time than than what it is now. I actually also studied for three three years in Guatemala. And the school system is actually very different than, than what it is here in the U.S. How was your experience going to school in Germany and now being a, being a student here in the U.S.? Uh, so I, for me, it is totally different in Germany, especially when you are in the university. You have to do everything on your own because um, studying in Germany, it's not asking your teacher. is. I mean, of course, for important things when you make your master thesis, uh, thesis and so on. But in general, you are on your own because they want to see how you work um, by yourself and how you research um, in scientific questions. So this is totally different. Um, of course, the teacher is also helpful and the professors. Um, but it's it's different because you're on your own and for them it's really important because this is the thing that you in the end of the day get jobs with more salary because they now you can work independently and in a team for sure but when you're doing research in a university it's um, my experience here is is kind of different but I'm thankful that I have this kind of both experience because you hear a lot the people talking, um, oh, it's like this to live in this country or this. But in the end, just the experience, just when you live the life um, in another country, then you know how it really works. And what after you finish your studies, what, what was your what, what are your degrees in? Uh, I had a, I have a bachelor in uh, journalism. And I'm, I have a master's degree in media science, so like a media creator. Um, I choose this topic because I think you can work all over the world um, with this kind of, of knowledge and also for uh, companies. Before I moved here, I worked for a company and made, um, not as a journalist, I worked in a PR. So I create website, the website, um, and a lot of, um, um, so everything what goes with what what they want to know from the company. And um, I started actually there to also work um, with English speaking coworkers. And that helps me because in the, in the beginning I was really nervous to speak another language, uh, especially on the phone. It was, it was kind of weird, but, um, it helps me when I came here. So you started uh, communicating in English uh, with clients uh, in the U.S., is that correct? Yes. Okay, and then how, how did you make the decision to say, okay, I've been communicating in, in English, uh, I have a life in Germany, but I want to make a transition to the U.S.? How, how was that decision? Um, yeah, for me, actually, it was a decision a decision long time ago because um, when I came the first time to the U.S., it's more than 10 years ago, just as a vacation, um, I, w I decided to want to live here, to live in another country, to get another experience. Um, even when it's great to live in Germany, um, 
and you can have a good job, great economy. Uh, I want to live in a different country. And I decided the United States. It's just something from my, from my feelings. When I came here, I said, I want to try to live here. And what city did you visit when you came here? The first I was in New York City. And um, I really, I really loved it. And when I made the decision to come here, I was looking for which city would be great. And I also saw a lot about Chicago. I read a lot about Chicago. And when I came here, it was when I moved here. I never went here before. It was the day when I moved here. Um, I also felt in love with Chicago because the river, the lake, it's so, it's just amazing. Just the vibe here it's uh it's great so i decided to stay in chicago yeah and now you work right by the river and right by the lake downtown chicago yes it's a very interesting story i mean i obviously I, I i was born here and outside of the time that i grew up outside of the u.s i've i've lived in chicago all my life well i have i have lived in other states indiana uh, colorado and i visited many other cities and states as well but i remember the time i visited uh, I did visit New York um, in my teenage years. I, we have family and we have family friends over there. So I, I've been to New York a few times now. And New York is a great city. Okay. Very diverse, huge, um, lots of entertainment. You can find everything and anything in New York. But I will say that I will always choose Chicago, even though I've, I've had the opportunity to live in, in Colorado and Colorado Springs. Loved absolutely the outdoors and the mountains. I always miss Chicago and Chicago is always going to be home. Um, and it's always interesting to hear somebody else's point of view. New York is great. And just like Chicago is great and Chicago has its negative um, portion, you know, of what, what goes on in Chicago. So does New York. Nevertheless, I think I will still choose Chicago over New York. A couple, a few years ago, I thought about actually moving to New York if I were able to find a job and it didn't work out. So maybe in the end, I think I'm much happier <laughs> here in Chicago. Um, so now you've been in Chicago for how long? Uh, four years, exactly. Four years. Mm -hmm. And how has that experience been? Oh, great. So I, I never regret to come to Chicago. Like I said before, it was when I moved here. It was the moment when I moved here that I came here. Because I know a lot of people, mm -hmm. they visit before, have some vacation before they move to another city. Um, but I just did it. And... Um, for me until now it's it's a great experience so uh, i met a lot of people from all over the world um, of course the big impact is that i start studying at mcc and learn the language and so you meet a lot of people from around the world and um I, I learned english and i also think that the people in chicago have more um, they give you a little bit more time when you start learning the language. They are, I mean, it's usually in the United States, it's like they are really open. And even when you talk totally wrong because you learn, they are welcome you with open arms. So this is what I, um, what I think it was my experience. So you came to Midwestern Career College as an international student to study English as a second language. How was that experience and how would you describe that experience to someone? Because you do a lot of that right now in social media, trying to captivate for someone what that experience is like, what our experience is like. How would you describe that experience to someone who's potentially thinking about moving to Chicago in general or, or coming to MCC? So I always would recommend it. And uh, I'm not saying it because I did it by myself. It's just uh, 
I have the experience with MCC when I came because I started learning English. I had a little bit, I mean, we learn some English in Germany, but it's, it's different. When you live in the United States or you live in the country with another language, you start learning when you move there. This is the moment when you start. And um, my teachers always were really supportive. Even when you say something wrong, because in the beginning, I remember I was like, oh my God, I cannot understand them maybe, or uh, hopefully I will understand. But they are so supportive. And even outside of the classroom, if you have some questions, um, they are really supportive and engage you and encourage you to to uh, keep keep learning. And this is what I tell the students now, because some also are shy, for sure, when they learn a new language or they're thinking of making mistakes. And I said, it's, it's a process. You have to make mistakes. The thing is, you have to practice all the time. You're not only in school. In school, you get the basic, you start you get an international community environment um, where you belong to because you're an international student and you should use it. You should not just stay with the people who speak your native language because this is not the way how you learn. You learn when you be with your international friends, when you go to the museum in Chicago or to a boat tour or whatever. Um, this is the the places where you learn um, English and then you will see because sometimes it's like uh, up and down, this is how you learn the language um, but in the end of the day you will see yourself and say oh my god I did this, I learned the language and um, this is what I can say when people ask me um, even when they ask me from Germany uh, is it good to do this is it good to study there, is it good to move there and I say If you want to do it, yes, it is good. But of course, you need um, you have to you have to be also strength to do it because it's not easy to move to another country. And that's an important point because everybody has to realize that it's not just I'm going to move there. Everything's going to be you know sweet. There are challenges, and we all have different challenges that we have to face. And I know for you. Um, You have, you know, a son as well, correct? And you moved here with with your son. How how was that like? Yes, I moved here with him. He, uh, when I moved here, he was five years old. Mm, he actually never went to a school in in Germany. He just went to the kindergarten because our system is different. Um, but uh, he is like in the beginning. He was like oh, I cannot understand the kids um, on the playground. But And I told him, just listen to them, you will understand. And it works. It's like he is now in school here for three years. So he starts his fourth with the fourth grade in two weeks. And he is totally happy for him. It's probably kind of adventure, but for him now, his half life, he lived in Germany and the other half here. So he is pretty young and even when we talk uh, at home German, because I think it's important that he learn it because it's such a hard language to learn, um, he is totally happy and for him it's like um, when he realized that we moved in the beginning, he thought he will lost his friends back in Germany and I said, no, you're not losing someone, you get new friends and this is how it is and um, he it's it's a big thing because I know that my family sometimes said why are you doing this because why you move to another country and it's hard for the child I said no because for him in the end of the day it will be really good for him that he has an experience to live in different countries and nobody can ever take it away from him and so I'm assuming he's been able to adapt quite well to the U.S. culture and to the school system. Um, yeah, I have two two kids. Uh, one is going to eighth grade. One is going to sixth mm -hmm. grade. Um, and I was actually with them yesterday. And I, I, I grew up playing soccer, as I mentioned. And my kids are into it as well. 
and we're playing yesterday and I like to teach them how to play properly or at least how I learned uh, as opposed to a lot of times and, and this is my personal opinion it has to a lot of times unfortunately coaches don't teach the correct techniques as far as how I see it so when I take that opportunity to teach them uh, my son goes yesterday oh great here we go again another history lesson on how to play soccer <laughs> it's so funny uh, to see them grow up and to see how witty they are uh, and to see them develop um, so what advice would you have to someone who who's thinking about moving and has kids um, what what would you tell someone about your experience I think first of all I would tell because I know that people um, who have kids um, may be um, kind of afraid to do this step because they think they do something. They take the kids from the environment, from the comfort zone, um, but kids are really, they adapt things much more faster than adults. So for the kid, it's not a problem. We, the adults, always have to think oh in my home country is like this and this but the kids just adopt everything in a playful way so i would say if you really want to do it you can do it and it's it's possible it's like because a lot of people for sure came here when they are 20 25 after they went to the university and the home countries but every life is different and just because you are over 30 and you have kids it not meant it's not and just that the kid has this experience and visit different schools different school systems and a different language we should never forget this because uh, even when you decide to go back after a couple of years your child always will have this experience and so as you but also the, the language, because the kid's learning so fast. He is much more better in English than I do. <laughs> so um, he's like a native speaker. And um, this is really great to see. So for him, he can go in Germany to school. He can go in the US and probably also in other countries um, because English is, is, is worth, it's really worth to learn it because you can communicate almost with everybody around the world because everybody speaks at least a little bit English. Right. So now you've had the opportunity to work here at MCC, you're, you're studying. What is, what is your goal once you're done either with MCC, to stay with MCC, to move on to other opportunities? What are you looking for for the future? Uh, for the future, I think um, I would like to to stay permanently in the U.S., definitely. And I would like to stay uh, with MCC. And um, it has to, we have to see after my association program when I make the degree and uh, then I can work for one year in the OPT. Um, so my goal for now is to stay here and really to work uh, full-time and um, this is my 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 personal and my professional goal for for now that's wonderful so as we wrap up uh, it's been wonderful to have a conversation with you and learn a little bit about who you are and what you do here at MCC and I know you know there are always challenges on a daily basis for what we do some of the things that you do here is also you give tours, correct, to uh, prospective students or students that are starting. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, correct. So um, I had the idea that when the students come to MCC or to Chicago, it's, it's every term, it's different. Some students already live a couple of years here or a month and they change uh, the school. They decided to change or people, they just come a week ago from abroad. And I think it's a good thing to get into the community uh, in the international community and meet the other new students. So I decided to do make um, a tour, a tour, a campus tour and a tour um, right around what's around the campus because our campus is directly in downtown Chicago. 
and you can see a lot and so I give them some really important good to know points around our campus for especially for students they are totally new and so also they can come together before the class starts so they already know okay um, she is new he is new so we come together in this new experience how has that been received by the students? Does that seem to be a positive experience for the students? Yes, definitely. So this is the feedback what I got. They're right. really uh, thankful for it, um, that I'm doing it. Uh, because when I talk to the student, in my case, it's even when I work for MCC, I'm still an international student. And for the new students especially, it's like, okay, she is a person, he she is a student, a student like us, so they talk a lot and asking for advice or what they can do and so it's really on the base that we are students and that we can help out each other or how it is or where you can go to make your driver license or whatever um, so really helpful um, tips for the students so i just get positive feedback Wonderful. Thank you for everything you do, and thank you for sharing your experiences uh, with me and with us and on this podcast today. Really looking forward to working with you for many more years to come. So as we wrap up, I want to thank you for taking that time. I want to thank, uh, thank everyone for listening to, to us today, and I hope we have been able to provide you with some helpful information. I'd like to thank our guest again for being here. And don't forget to write us at podcast.mccollege.edu. And we look forward to talking to you next time.